Hello everybody. Today I'm going to explain how to solve the problem Xenia and Colorful Gem from the code for this run 635. In the Division 1 version, this was the problem B, while in the Division 2 version, this was the problem D. In this problem, we are asked to minimize the value of the following expression if we fix exactly one number from each of the three arrays given in the input. At the first glance, it seems optimal to try to choose the numbers such that they are as close as possible. And after either writing a brute force or proving mathematically, or just uh, submitting after an intuitive guess, it turns out that uh, if this is implemented properly, this is true. Now I'm going to explain based on a test, which is better than the sample test, why is this true? Now I'm going to write the sample test. So basically the arrays are like this. First array is formed by the following elements. Second one is formed by the following elements. And the third one is formed by the following elements. Basically two, three, four, and six. 1, 9, 11, and 8, 5, 7, and 10. Now let's sort the arrays. The first one is already sorted. The second one will be sorted. And the third one is also already sorted. Now in the implementation phase, you can either sort the arrays or keep a set data structure which will keep the elements sorted with the same time complexity. Now, in order to prove my claim, I'm going to fix uh, in each of the arrays the number I'm going to fix. Let's say I want to fix the number 6 in the first array. Uh, in each of the other two arrays, I'm going to check the closest element, uh, both on the left and on the right side, and we will have four cases, because in each array, we are going to find additional two numbers. And if we fix uh, the first number, we will have four cases for each number fixed. Basically, the closest number to 6 in the second array are 1 and 8. 1 is the biggest one, which is smaller than 6, and 8 is the, bigger, the smallest one, bigger than 6. In the third array, these numbers are 5 and 7. And now we have four cases, and we should check for each of the triples created uh, the following sum manually and it actually turns out that this is optimal because uh, the numbers will be as close as, as possible and we can't increase uh, the value if we uh, check the value is more close like if we choose values which are uh, farther from the required element, the square sum will be bigger. Even though, let's say, uh, we have seven, we can choose nine and it will be better for seven compared to one. But we are going to check this case when we are going to fix uh, seven. So you don't have to consider any more cases if we fix the number. Why does this work? Because we are going to fix the middle number. Like if we have a smaller than or equal than b and smaller or equal than c, we are going to always fix the value of the b. And now the claim I have stated is obvious because we want to make a and c as close as possible to b in order to have uh, two square sums to be almost zero. And now I'm going to present uh, how I implemented this solution. Basically, I have read the input 
and I use set in order to keep the element. This can also be done by binary search. You don't need to use set for this problem, but set has the upper bound and lower bound functions, which allow someone to find the closest element without much effort. Now I have fixed the permutation, like the first element in the permutation is going to be the array from which going to choose the middle element. The second array is going to be the array I have chosen the bigger element. And the third position is going to be the one from which I choose the lower element. And now we should just use the lower bound function and drop from the iterator uh, based on several cases. In the first case, uh, like for the value which is bigger than the first one, we can just drop uh, the iterator only if we don't have some value. And this will work because it will be the closest element. And since we don't have any bigger element, we should always get the maximum element. For the second iterator, however, there are two cases in which we should drop. Either the iterator corresponds to the end of the set, like there is no bigger number, bigger or equal in case of the lower bound, or uh, if the iterator is bigger and we fix the value to be smaller, and there is a smaller number in the set. Last but not least, we are going to call a simple function which computes the cost. As you can see here, I didn't write it exactly like in the statement, but since it's about the sum of squares, it doesn't matter if we write it like b minus a or a minus b. If we multiply the same number, the answer will be the same. So you don't need to worry about how you write this. If you liked watching this video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell button in order to be the first one to get notifications about the new videos. Also, check out the links in the description for more content about my channel. Until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, good luck and goodbye.